I'm attorney Jonathan Sweetek with the Shannon Law Group. Our firm helps individuals recover financially and emotionally after experiencing injuries due to vaccinations. We do this by pursuing compensation for them through the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. Pneumococcal vaccines are also covered under the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. And these were developed to prevent pneumococcal infections from ear infections all the way to pneumonia. Um, the tricky part about pneumococcal vaccines is that there are two different kinds. And one is covered under the program because it's recommended for children and adults, uh, whereas the other is only recommended for adults. Um, when you're investigating your own possible uh, vaccine injury case and you received a pneumococcal vaccine, it's important that you get your vaccination record so you know which vaccine you received. The pneumococcal conjugate vaccine is the vaccination that's recommended for children and adults. So that one is covered under the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. The pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccination is only recommended for adults, so that one is not covered under the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. So if you experienced an injury or a side effect uh, by or, or caused by the pneumococcal vaccination, it's important that you understand which one that you received. Um, because the, the injuries or conditions that are associated with the pneumococcal vaccination on the vaccine injury table include serva, shoulder injury related to vaccine administration, and fainting. And either vaccine can cause that condition, but you're only going to be eligible for compensation if you receive the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. And when we talk about serva, what we're looking for is some kind of inflammation in your shoulder joint that was caused by the administration of the vaccine. And what we look for are the onset of your symptoms sometime within two days of the administration. For fainting, um, obviously what we're looking for is some kind of immediate reaction, so uh, fainting within one hour of the administration of the vaccine. If, if you suffered either of those conditions and you received the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, you might be eligible for compensation under the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. Now remember, for all of these conditions, uh, in order to be eligible for compensation in the program, your symptoms need to persist for at least six months. So, for example, with a fainting type injury, usually what we see are you know, injuries that are the results of fainting, um, that are, are more serious or more severe, uh, head injuries and, and things like that. Um, so that's just one thing to remember with, with all of these conditions. Now, if you or a loved one has experienced one of these injuries or conditions that we just talked about, uh, you might be eligible for compensation through the Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. So if we were going to help you file a petition for that particular injury or, or condition, there's a few things we'd have to confirm before we could move forward. The first would be that you satisfy the statute of limitations. So in order to file a petition, you have to file it within three years of the onset of your symptoms. So if your symptoms began you know, on the day that you received the vaccination, you'd have three years from that date to file a petition. Now your symptoms from that particular injury or condition also have to persist for six months before we can file the petition. That's a prerequisite for any injury that you experience as a result of a vaccine. You also have to receive the vaccine in the United States with a few exceptions. Now, if you meet all of the, you know, these filing requirements, we can draft and file a petition for you. Now, the success of your petition you know, uh, relies on a few different criteria, and that's set forth in the vaccine injury table. So if we can show that the, you know, your injury meets the criteria that's set forth on the vaccine injury table, then there's gonna be a presumption that the vaccine caused your injury which can be critical to the success of your petition. And that's what we're trying to do in phase one of the compensation program. Ultimately, we're trying to show that your injury or condition was caused by the vaccine. Now, if we're successful uh, in, during that phase of the program, we would move into the second phase of the program, which is determining how much compensation you're entitled to. And for that, phase, what we're looking at are any out-of-pocket medical expenses, any lost wages, earnings, or income as a result of this injury, 
and pain and suffering damages, which are meant to compensate you for the severity of your pain and your symptoms and the impact that you know, your pain and symptoms had on your daily life. All three of those things uh, are, would be part of your potential compensation through the program. During this entire process, uh, we're advocating for you um, to receive compensation for your injury. Our opponent, or the respondent in this case, is the government. They're reviewing your petition, they're reviewing the evidence, and uh, they're going to defend the fund if they believe that you're not entitled to compensation. Or they're going to defend the fund if, if they think you're not entitled to the, the compensation we believe you're entitled to. Now, any disputes between us and the government are resolved by the judge or the special master that's assigned to your case. Now, we can resolve those disputes through settlement with the government, uh, or we can resolve those disputes through hearing before the court, before the judge. Ultimately, uh, the judge can and will decide the fate of your case uh, and how much compensation you're entitled to if we're not able to reach an agreement with the government. Throughout this entire process, from the moment we sign up your case until the moment it's resolved, you're not going to pay us anything. You're not going to pay us a retainer. You're not going to be billed by us for any of our, our fees or our costs. And at the end of the case, uh, if the court or the government decides to award you compensation, we do not take a percentage of that compensation as our fee on a contingency fee basis. The way that we earn our money and, and retrieve our costs is through petitioning the government for those fees and costs. A completely separate determination from whether you're entitled to compensation and how much compensation you're entitled to. So at no point during this process do you ever have to concern yourself with how much I'm getting paid, whether I'm getting paid, when I'm getting paid. If you or a loved one has experienced an injury or side effect due to a vaccine, please contact us for a free consultation. We'd be happy to discuss your options with you. You can contact us by calling us at 312-578-9501 or click the link in the description below.